Hey guys, Tony here. Back with another Lee Chess Rapid game against Capaccioso. Capaccioso, excuse me. Uh, hmm. What do I want to do here? Playing a lot of Grunfeld lately. Uh. <laughs> well, we'll go for it again. I'm happy to play a Grunfeld. Ugh. Bishop g5. I don't know that much about this this line. I think you're supposed to go... I think bishop g7 is actually a move, and there's a pawn sack there, but I think this is the usual way to play. And now I believe when the bishop goes to f4, you go c5 here, and when the bishop goes to h4, you go d takes c4. Now, I, can't, I could not tell you why that's the case, but I do believe against bishop h4 that you're supposed to take here. And against e3, I think you're supposed to be very stubborn and play bishop e6. <laughs> Not 100% sure about this, but I think this this bishop e6 idea was first played in a Fisher game a long time ago. <clears throat> but I, I don't actually know. I don't have the theoretical expertise in the Grunfeld that I wish I had, but I'm, I'm getting there. Hope everyone's having a good day. I work from home today, so it's always a good day. And by working from home, I mean... Uh, from about 2 to 5, I followed the U.S. Championships. <laughs> I had to drive my parents to the airport today. So that was my excuse. <laughs> Worked out pretty well. A bloody day at the U.S. Champ championships, by the way. The only drawn game was Onishuk versus... Um, I think Jeffrey Zhang and Naka won, Wesley So won, Sam Shankland won, um, jeez, what's his name? Young guy, he's always in time trouble. I think he played a UTD. Ugh, he beat Shabalov, whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> Now, I know this is a move. I don't know what the the best response is. Ugh. Queen b1, of course, attacking this square. There's also, well, there's not really a check there, is there? I mean, b6, I, I think rook b1 is supposed to be met by b6, so I, I guess you could probably argue that queen b1 can also be met by, by b6. And that's okay. You know what? Yeah, I'm just going to... I don't I don't actually know the theory here, so I should probably just play the, the obvious move and, and get along with it. <clears throat> well, this guy seems like he knows some stuff, or he's just playing real fast. So bishop d5, e4... H6 is the... Oh, I kind of get it now. The queen... That's slick. The queen uh, protects the the pawn on E4 so that he can go knight G5. Oh, okay, I get it. I'm learning stuff, though. <laughs> but what do I do? After E4, do I have to... So if H6 and he moves the knight, what happens? That's what I'm a little bit nervous about. So something like bishop d5, e4, h6, knight f3. If I want to hold on to the pawn, e6, ah, but if I go bishop e6, he can't go d5 yet because c3 is hanging. So bishop d5, e4, h6, knight f3, bishop e6. Maybe something like queen c2 there. Just protecting c3 and getting ready for d5 and bishop takes c4. Hmm. I mean, no doubt white has comp there. <laughs> but is it... Is it too much? I don't, I don't know. I don't have many other choices, though. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with this. After e4, I'll play h6. Wow, knight h3. Ah, He's coming back into this square. This guy knows some stuff, and I don't know anything. So what the heck do I do here? 
Bishop e6, knight f4, queen d7, or queen d6. I mean, moving the bishop again is just lame. So, like, my option is bishop e6, knight f4, and then essentially protect the bishop, or just go something like bishop b7 right away and let him take on c4. Probably the position after bishop b7, bishop takes c4, is not terrible for black. I can castle, go knight d7, c5. His his knight on... These two pieces are not particularly great. The queen on b1 and the rook on a1, I think, are a little bit misplaced. But he does have the, the full center at, at no material deficit. I'm looking at bishop e6, knight f4, queen d6. Protecting the bishop on e6 and also attacking the knight. And if knight takes e6, queen e6, he still really can't go d5 because of here. Maybe he can go e5. But maybe I'm happy if he goes e5. Then I can just go queen d7 and... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna Bishop B7 is is probably okay too. It th this is gonna be a good game for me to look up the the theory afterwards because I really don't know. I wish I had any of my pathetically numerous uh, Grunfeld sources on hand so that I can look at it on stream, but I don't. In fact, the safest Grunfeld is sitting on my coffee table right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, what if? What if bishop g3 there, though? So maybe queen d7 is better. I'm worried about queen d6, bishop g3. And it's just kind of irritating. Black has... White has many threats. Knight h5, knight takes g6. Even knight e6, queen e6, bishop takes c7 there would be a threat, sort of. Ah, but if queen c7... Uh, you can't go d5 right away, but it's starting to look scary, isn't it? I'm under a moderate amount of pressure here. Um, let's just go queen d7. I don't, I don't think allowing bishop g3 is a good idea. I'm, I'm using too much time as is. I'm a little nervous if he just goes queen c2, what I'm going to do about d5, though. It is a major issue of calculating at one ply. I guess I, I queen c2 g5 is maybe okay and takes takes yeah bishop g3. Maybe I can just go c5 there and, and be all right. Yeah, I actually made a mental note to myself to the, the bishop g5 variation is is one that I haven't seen a ton of and. Actually, I got uh, this this position in a blitz game recently, and my opponent went rook b1, and I had no idea what to do. And so I looked it up at, like, rook b1. There's a couple different moves. I think b6, knight d7, bishop d5, c5 have all been played, and I, like, sort of just quickly perused the theory, but I didn't look at queen b1. I've seen it in similar lines. Um, now I sort of fi finally kind of get it. <laughs> um, I get the idea. But again, I don't I don't actually know any of the moves. This this system is is another one where like a, a lot of different variations can look very similar. Really, ah, he can check, and then take on c4. I guess is his idea. So if he checks and I go c6, queen c4, I can take on e4 if I want to be really stubborn. Oh, that's just good because it wins a bishop, huh? So if queen b5 c6. But he's just losing a piece after that. Takes there, takes there, takes there. So queen b5 for the moment is is not good. I'm guessing queen b4 I can go c5 or I can just go knight a6. But queen b4 c5 seems good. If d takes c5 then maybe I can go. Ah, uh, but maybe I can't do that. Well, okay. I'll have to think about it. I was looking at um, 
queen b4, c5, d takes c5, knight a6, but then he has queen b5 check, and he picks up the knight on a6, I think. Ah, but maybe he can't even take it. If I go queen d7, let's say, queen takes a6, bishop takes c3 check. Ay -ay -ay. So I'm um, still up a pawn, but maybe my position is a little bit precarious. This queen on e6 is moderately dumb. My extra pawn is pretty loose. I have some miscellaneous light squared weaknesses that I have to deal with. White has the two bishops, white has a big center. Probably adequate comp, I'm guessing. I need to castle and play knight d7, and c5, I think, would be the plan. I don't see any reason why I'd want to play knight c6. Maybe castles in c5 first, and then I can decide whether or not my knight wants to go to d7 or c6. That's possibly a little bit more flexible. I know in some positions black plays like Slav style and just tries to go c6 and b5 or a6 and b5, but somehow I feel like this isn't one of those positions. I need to get my queen side developed here. Sooner rather than later. Yeah, one problem with putting the bishop on h4 is that it doesn't really contribute to like the defense of any of these squares. You know, normally the bishop might be on e3 or d2 or wherever in the Grunfeld, and it protects these these crucial uh, dark squares on this pawn chain, but out here it's just sort of floating for now, which is kind of a bummer for white. <clears throat> <laughs> during, the, uh, during the stream today, Fabiano Caruana went into the confession box like 10 minutes into his match and confessed his undying love for Lawrence Trent. <laughs> um, uh, if, if you guys aren't familiar, Lawrence Trent is uh, an international master from, from the UK. He was also for a while working for Chess24 in sort of a very similar capacity to what Jan Gustafsson does now. But um, he quit there and he took a job as uh, Fabi's manager and pr presumably uh fabi lost some kind of bet and had to pro proclaim his love for, for lawrence on on stream but he he wouldn't say what the bet was he denied that there was a bet but no one is <laughs> no one is doing that if if they didn't lose a bet pretty funny i like this my opponent delving into a a deep tony rose style think here I'm, of course, not using the time constructively um, by thinking about possible replies to my, my opponent's l most likely candidates. I'm just sort of rambling like an ignoramus, but that's fine. That's what makes it more exciting. I'm sort of due for a loss. I'm very happy with the, the last couple games I played on stream, especially that, that Alakine yesterday. I think I played pretty well. It is worth noting knight c6, d5, maybe, at some point is, is going to be annoying, so maybe... Ah, interesting. This move strikes me as kind of suspicious, honestly. What is the idea? Ah, maybe he wants to go queen e4. Interesting. I'm strongly considering bishop e5 here. <clears throat> bishop e5, d takes e5. Queen takes e5, bishop e2. Queen takes c3 check. Let's say king f1. Uh, it looks a little speculative. There's also bishop takes e5, queen e4, which might be an issue. Another sort of usual option would be 
castles, queen e4, knight c6. I think maybe white is planning on having d5 there, but do I not have queen takes e5 in that case? Hitting the queen. He can't take on c6 because he loses a queen. And if he takes on e5, I can take with my knight. I can even take with the bishop on that in that case because d takes c6, bishop takes c3 check. Uh, hangs the rook, so... Hmm. I guess the only question is if, if I want to go c5 first. After queen e, ca castles queen e4, knight c6, I can't go c5 is, is my only hesitation there. Mm. The Grunfeld. Why do I play this stupid opening? It's too complicated for my feeble brain. So c5, queen e4. I, I presume that this is a, is his idea. I guess c5, there are other moves, but let's look at queen e4 first. So c5, queen e4. Hitting the rook. Knight c6 is the most obvious move. Ah, uh, if, yeah, if d5 is still queen e5, I think. c5, queen e4. Hmm. I sort of feel like that's White's idea. I, I'm just going to castle. I don't think there's any. So there. C5, queen takes C4. Queen takes C4, bishop takes C4. C takes D4, C takes D4, knight C6. He has bishop d5 there. Bishop e5, bishop takes c4, I guess. Knight c6, queen takes c4. Queen takes c4, bishop takes c4. Well, c5 strikes me as the most obvious move. I'm trying to open up the center and crack, crack open this this uh, dummy sitting here on e1, but it's somehow not panning out the way I want. I'm thinking about queen g4 here. I guess bishop e7 is possible, though, isn't it? Yeah, the problem is this bishop is just very good. Maybe c takes d4, c takes d4, knight c6, bishop d5, knight takes d4 is possible. The idea being bishop takes a8, knight c2 check, takes here. 
I don't think that actually works now that I look at it though. C takes d4, c takes d4, knight c6, bishop d5, knight takes d4, bishop takes a8, down a rook, knight c2 check, king d2, knight takes a1, and then like bishop e4. I can take on e5 in that case, but my knight is, is woefully trapped on the a1 square for the rest of the game. Ugh. Should I flick in this? Actually, bishop d5 is a threat. Maybe I can just take, take, knight c6, bishop d5, rook a to c8. You can take here, though. g5, bishop d5, yeah, that's annoying. What if c takes, c takes, knight c6, bishop d5, g5, just bishop takes here, rook c8, that doesn't seem that good. Oh, Tony, you're running low on time. I feel like I need to play accurately here. If knight d7, I think maybe e6 is... Cracking me upside the head. Well, I'm going to take, I might just play e6. Ooh, he wants to do that. That's actually uh, pretty good, isn't it? Hmm. Tony, you big dumb idiot. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm just I'm just busted now. Yeah, I just don't have any reasonable ways to develop my pieces honestly. All right. Time in exchange for zero compensation. Well, let's save the e7 pawn, and maybe I can hope to play e6 and knight d5 and not be ridiculously worse, only seriously worse. I have, like, you know, the okie doke threat of knight z2, but I don't think he's going to fall for that. I'm also down uh, six and a half minutes. No, why did I do this? Rook c1, knight d3, of course. I mean, king e2, maybe, yeah. King e2, knight c2, rook d1 is reasonable. Probably if king e2, I should just go e6. Or maybe rook d8. King d2, sure. That also seems good. Yeah, it's just probably not enough. Even king c3 here seems pretty reasonable, doesn't it? Knight d5 check, he just moves his king somewhere. I guess king b2 or whatever. 
even if I set up e6 and knight d5 as sort of a pseudo blockade, I think at some point a5 is just going to be really irritating. a4, a5. Maybe I can play a5 myself because the knight on d5 guards b6. I'm in some trouble regardless. My king side also is weak to these <laughs> f4 or h4 thrusts. I have moderate to severe problems everywhere. This bishop is not very good. I'm down a clean exchange for no material. Yeah, it's just not not the prettiest. We can fight, though. We can make it irritating with a two-second increment. I can lose a long game instead of a short game. Yeah, I think knight king c3 is pretty good, actually. I didn't see anything better. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna check him again. I think at some point, I guess I'm I'm gonna have to reroute the bishop. It's obviously doing literal nothing on g7, so that's one idea. If he goes h4 or f4, I think I just have to leave it, which I'm not super pumped about. If f4, maybe I don't want to leave it because he can go f5. But maybe even that in in that case I should leave it. I mean f6. I'm I'm playing bishop f8 anyway, so none of it's good. It's all everything is bad. But maybe I can make it make it hard. Hope he blunders the exchange back somehow. Oh, he left the game for a second. I got real pumped. I was going to claim the hell out of that victory. Hmm. F3. Well, I, I don't have time to think about much of anything. I'm just going to play bishop f8. <clears throat> I'm letting this knight linger on b4 instead of playing knight d5 right away, just in case there's some, like, real cheap, cheap tactics. It's not, uh... There's nothing probably, you know, in the theoretical sense wrong with knight d5. I'm just keeping this knight on b4 to try and wamboozle him out of an exchange somehow. Hope chess is essentially what I'm what I mean. Yeah. Stopping rook c7. I guess at some point uh He's going to play rook c8. So I should probably play king g7 and get ready to play rook d7 or something. Maybe I can put my bishop on b4 and play like a5. If he plays a4, I'm playing a5. Or maybe I'll play bishop b4, not commit myself to, to the weakening a5 yet. I don't necessarily have to. Maybe my bishop's actually a reasonable piece on this square. Maybe he should play a3, actually. It's not like unbelievably easy to make progress. Where is that thing going? I don't know. Ah, maybe he just wanted to stop this. That makes some sense. Just trying to hunker down. Playing all of the constructive moves. Maybe I could have played bishop a3 there just to be annoying. Not let him double up. Doesn't much matter, I don't think, but... It's always better to be annoying. 
than not. Is there any merit to knight f4? I actually, now knight f4 would be bad because it would allow rook c7. The knight is frozen on d5 for the rest of his life, essentially, is what I'm saying. Sure. Hmm. Maybe that was dumb. <laughs> rook g8, king h7. Rook c to c8, perhaps. He sees it. That is annoying. Oh, I mated. Uh... <laughs> I'll let him mate me. Damn it. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at that one. Kind of, kind of an embarrassment. Ay ay ay. All right. Oh, this has got to be fixed. This. This UE business. That's not good. So knight e4 is the main move. I know bishop g7 is a move, and it's not supposed to be all that great for white to take here. Black can take, and if knight d5, I think the move is just bishop g7 again. And, and like, c5 is coming, and c5 and knight c6, and because you've traded off your dark squared bishop, b2 is really loose, and it's hard for... It's hard for white to keep this this pawn on d4 and not lose it with the pressure from the queen, etc. So usually if white takes, they take this way, I think. And then, yeah, there are, there are a bunch of different moves here. I think Svidler talks about this on his in, in his Chess 24 series, but I haven't watched it, obviously. But knight e4 is, is the, the usual move. And there, there are a couple of different moves here. Taking is not very good, if I recall. Like, takes, takes... Maybe e3 is the main move. Queen d2, okay. I recall looking at this and just thinking bishop g7 and c5 was fine. Yeah, I've seen I've seen this stuff before. And I, I think after... Well, see, a lot of my preparation has knight f3 and bishop g7 already tossed in too, so... I don't know much of, much of anything about these systems, but... Pretending like I do. d takes c4, I think, is the main move. E3, yeah, bishop E6. So I knew some things. Queen B1. Ah, Queen D5 is played marginally more often and scores marginally better. And the point is what? I don't know. So if similar to the game... I guess now the, the the one benefit is that my bishop is already sort of protected, and this thing is protected twice. Queen b5 check is sort of thwarted for now, so this really doesn't do anything at the moment. Yeah, I don't know that th this move looks weird. It's not a move I would play if I didn't know I was <laughs> I was I was playing theory. You know, it, it looks sort of like you know bizarre to place your pieces in this sort of configuration, but. You know, modern chess. So c5, I know, just scores really well for black. What's the deal there? If takes, knight d7 is four. Oh, bishop d5. Check, and then queen d7. And if queen takes c5, are you going e5, or what is happening? e5, queen a5 is forced, knight c6. So black just gets a massive lead in development. Is, is what I'm seeing here. And if here... Oh, this is weird. I guess white is just super far behind in kingside development here. Bishop h6. What if I just play like a really obvious move? Well, that move allows like takes or something. But okay, castles. Well, king f is bad. Castles. Bishop c4. Queen e6, bishop e2, force, and now here. And white is losing, pretty much, right? Yeah, so that's ugly. So if he can't take on c5, what's he doing? 
Rook B1. Takes, takes. Knight D7. Okay, I mean, yeah, this, this does look reasonable for black. Knight F3, Bishop G7, I guess. E6, what? Why not here? Uh, maybe... Maybe black just wants to take. Without the bishop hanging, of course. Bishop E2. I don't understand this, this position at all, clearly. People are playing bishop E7, it's just wacky. It's good to know that c5 is an option. It seems the simplest. But okay. Yeah, knight h3. So this guy was prepared. Scores pretty well for white. Makes sense. It's very annoying. At least on a, in a practical sense, it's annoying to have to face this move. Oh, he didn't play knight h3. I, he, he played knight back to h3 later. So this probably reaches the same position as knight h3, most likely. Bishop d5, e4... Okay, h6 is the main move. Bishop b7, I was just worried that it was just too compliant. I mean, if I don't try to hold on to this pawn, I feel like I'm just giving white exactly what he wants. I don't want to hang f7. Yeah, I mean, he's just got the center. Seems kind of like a dream. Felt like I had to play to keep the... Uh, so bishop b7 now is good. Why is that? So if takes... C5, maybe? No, that move sucks. Don't play that move. I don't understand this position at all. So if C5, Knight F4, that's good for white for some reason. Or the computer was showing it was good for white for a second. Okay, so maybe C5 is playable. Hmm. Okay, but I was stubborn. Maybe stupidly so. So if here, here, I was worried about this. And I, I thought I had to go queen d7 anyway. Yeah, and I think I even looked at queen c2, or I looked at queen c2 in similar positions. Getting ready for d5 by protecting the c3 pawn. Yeah, this just seems more comfortable for white. It seems like I, I'm happy that the bishop is at least crappy on h4, and queen d6 lets him, lets him fix it for free. So at least I should play queen d7, I think. Knight d6, and then e5. This seemed really suspicious to me, but I couldn't find a good way to to pose problems. It just feels weird for, for to me for white to go e4, e5 when his king is still stuck in the center and my, my queen is lined up on the e-file, etc. But I just couldn't... Uh, you know, and I'm getting ready to just co completely blow open the dark squares in some way, but... Yeah, I mean, clearly I, I didn't find a good way to, to prove it. Maybe castles is just... I was lazy and I didn't want to calculate c5 and all like the, the complications, but maybe... Castles gave White the move he needed to to start consolidating. Like, what if c5? Yeah, even queen b5 check. I looked at this briefly, but I thought, yeah, whatever. I was I, I was a little complacent, I think, in this phase of the game. Peter wants to go here, takes, 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 and now knight c6. That makes sense, actually. My pawns look completely gross, um, and that is indeed the case. But white's bishop is not on c4 yet, so knight c6 cannot be met by bishop d5. Or in this case, bishop takes e6, check, king h7, bishop d5 or something, pinning this knight. So I, I'm I'm fracturing my pawn structure deliberately to, to gain a move. White has to waste a tempo exchanging and... Instead, what I did, I, I developed his bishop for him, which in hindsight is, is was fairly dumb. I think this move is a mistake. And now we see that, yeah, I mean, I played c takes d4, which is incredibly stupid, but... Um, yeah, why didn't I just play knight c6 here? And after bishop d5, just rook a to c8 or something. Ah, I was worried about the, the pawn hanging, which is, I think, a legitimate worry. But even here, it looks like I have counterplay. I thought bishop d6, but of course that loses a bishop. So white would have to go back, and then I feel like maybe after rook c4, yeah. I have reasonable counterplay. If rook d1... Maybe g5 and then f6. Oh, oh I can take right away because of this. 
Hmm. Yeah, maybe even that was that was the way to go. But even earlier, yeah, I think knight c6 is is a little bit smarter, a little bit more dynamic. Takes takes and d4 is is threatened. If he takes here, I'm just gonna take here. He can take here and eh, he's got some weak pawns on on open files and my pawn structure is an abomination, but. He's got some weaknesses, and yeah, I, I would be happy to play this position as black. I have a big lead in development, too. Queen takes c4 is, is an inaccuracy, for sure. Let's just request the computer analysis for s and g's. <laughs> yeah, and after bishop d5, I'm just lost, I think. Uh, objectively, I think this is probably just losing. There's There's not much for me to really do here. My bishop is very bad, and even though my knight is very good on d5, it's only a matter of time before the full exchange comes to the four, and white finds a way to to, to invade. And th the one he found was good. Maybe I shouldn't play rook d7. It's not like I'm scared of rook c7 anyway, but I didn't want to allow him to go, like, let's say rook c2 is in the game, and like, rook c8. Myself, yeah, I didn't play very well. My opponent played well. He deserved to win this game for sure. Hmm. Yeah, rook c2, rook d7, rook a to c1, king g7, rook c8, all very logical. And now now it's, it's honestly starting to get hard for me to find moves. Maybe something like h5 here. Just planning to go h4 and trying to force him. If, if he wants to make progress on... On this wing, playing h4 will force him to trade off some pawns at least. Yeah, I mean, bishop d8. The move that I played, king g6, I think is is in, is an in inaccuracy. Even if practically I can defend this, it looks uncomfortable. And, and I shouldn't allow him to do this. Yeah, king g6 is kind of dumb. But it, it, it's, it's, it's not that easy to find moves either. I mean, I guess I can just play king h7, king g7, <laughs> king h7, king g7. But eventually, eventually my opponent is going to find some way to, to make progress. I think probably h4 or like g3, f4, or f5 is, is an interesting way to go. Pushing f6 is allowed, further cramping my king and this bishop. Uh, eventually, probably white can go. Put the, put the pawn on a5 in a minority attack and try to attack b6 or a7 as well. I, I think, uh, objectively, I'm, I'm already lost or close to loss, and then I, I stupidly blundered mate in two. Ay, 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 Tony. Quite a game. Quite embarrassing. But I think I had a good position. I mean, as far as learning the Grunfeld goes, it was a victory. I just played like an idiot after the opening phase. Even through here, I think I should be more than fine and very happy with the counterplay that I got. I just didn't didn't polish off white in the right ways and didn't find the way the best ways to further my initiative. Queen g4 here, by the way. I just sort of flicked to a random position, but now why is queen g4 so good? Presumably, I say presumably a lot. I'm sorry. That that must be irritating. Ah, is queen e4 check the idea? It's it's kind of a double attack. That's quite nice, actually. I wish I would have seen this. I didn't see this this geometry here. The point is that bishop e7, queen e4. Bishop e2 allows queen f1 at the very least, so white probably has to move the king and keep g2 defended, but... Oh, and then knight c6. And if queen a3, maybe even knight d4. Yeah, I was about to say knight d4 is, looks like a blowout. Yeah, so this is just completely crushing. This would have been awesome. Yeah, this is a really nice line. Of course, the idea is that queen takes d4 is a double attack. That is slick. That is, uh... That's the way I should be playing chess. Like a caveman. Yeah, that's nice. Touche, stockfish. Yeah, but as it went, I just... As usual, got into time trouble and didn't play all that accurately. And yeah, I missed... The, the key moment, of course, is that I missed bishop d5. I saw bishop d5 in every single permutation except immediately. I looked at c takes d4, and so often... It's a good lesson. We we sort of just... A, a lot of times I notice this is that, you know... Playing the natural move, the natural recaptures especially, um, sometimes can be a mistake. Because, you know, white doesn't have to capture back. This is only a pawn, and he's got bigger, bigger fish to fry and bigger threats that... 
that I didn't see. So a good lesson on not missing in between moves and sort of, you know, understanding tactical threats. Like I saw Bishop Bishop D5 and I just didn't flip around the move order. Uh, another good lesson always when you're looking at tactics is flip around the move order. I realized that fact like around maybe 1700, 1800 that a lot of times when you're seeing these tactical ideas and they're not quite working for one player or the other, flipping the move order or like playing a preparatory move and then playing that same tactic a lot of times is the the solution to your problems. And yeah, here I just, I disregarded that fact. I missed it for a split second and I paid very dearly. And my rook on A8 paid very dearly. So a uh, good lesson there. And yeah, I, this is a good impetus for me to also study this bishop g5 variation. I wasted a ton of time trying to figure out the theory myself. Did okay, but could have could have used that time later figuring out all of the necessary deets later. So good game. Well played, uh, Capacciosa. Well played. And uh, I will see you guys later with another, another game. Hopefully some instructional content uh, soon. I'm about halfway through making all the material for the Apostolic Bishops Endings video, so that will come sooner rather than later. I will be out this weekend, though, so this is probably my last video until Sunday when I get home. So expect a video on Sunday uh, and nothing else between, you know, well, really just Friday, Saturday, I guess. All right, I'm going to shut up. Bye, guys.